Hello everyone. So I'm back from Christmas and other things I've been doing and stuff that I haven't been getting tutorials out. I probably will try this year to get out a tutorial every week or two weeks maximum. I do have some ideas as just actually doing them in front of you and having all the notes written. Um, so for this one, I'm going to do something that I saw kind of being done but not really. I want to create a low poly rope. Now these ones are difficult because you need the normal maps and the rope looks strange because usually to get a rope you need a really good texture and or lots of polygons just to get it wrapped around itself properly. So for what this one we're going to do is create a high poly rope and then create an easy way to create the low poly rope from that high poly rope, sort of. And then from that we are going to take that high poly rope, low poly rope, bake them together into a nice little uh, normal map and it'll be quick and easy. It won't have the best results just because of the way it works. However, no one looks at ropes that closely as long as it has the appearance of being a rope. It looks good enough to a lot of game engines and studios since they're usually on the ground somewhere else. They're just clutter or distractions. If it's a much closer rope, then you'll be like Batman and have two years working on a cape or something. Anyway, so first what we're going to do is set up our units. First, I'm just going to use the basic units um, on the unit setup. Just use the generic units. I don't need anything special. I'm not using any real world units or anything like that. Next what we're going to do is set up our snapping toggle, so we'll just right click on our snaps toggle and hit grid points and vertex. And uh, now all we're going to do is start creating this cross section of rope. So what we're going to do is use the lock modifier to create a cross section of the rope that will allow us to loft it over any surface or any length of rope that we want and then bake it from there. So now we'll just drag it out and we'll set the radius to be 4. And what we'll want to do is make sure that your grid points are set at uh, 10 away from each other. So if you want to go into your grid spacing, just right click on your snaps toggle, go into your home grid, and grid spacing should be 10. Now what we're going to do is go effect pivot only and pull the effect pivot, or the pivot right back into the center and rotate this 45 degrees. And now we're going to rotate it. I don't think that's 4 exactly. Oh, it is. So hmm. let me see something. We'll drop that down to 3.75. It shouldn't touch each other. The reason I'm doing this is, as you can see, when I rotate it, that used to overlap each other. You shouldn't want it overlapping. You want just barely missing each other. So 3.75 will be the radius, and then we will copy it around the section eight times. This gives us a nice little cross section of rope. So what we're going to do now, nine shapes selected, that's because there's two here. I, you should only copy it seven times around because the eighth one's right there. Now what we're going to do is convert this one to an edible poly, or edible spline, sorry, edible spline and attach the rest of these. So just click on them quickly to attach them. And now we have the cross section of our rope. So what we're going to do is rename this rope cross section. And we're just going to move that out to the side. Next what we're going to do is create the actual length of rope that we want to create. So what we're going to do is just quickly go and under splines, uh, lines, under splines, under line, and click and drag out our length of rope. Now, you can get this really, really complicated and it really doesn't change any of the fact. Sure, if you have it overlapping like this, you'll have to maybe pull it up or sometimes the normal map will get baked. It doesn't really matter too much. People won't look that closely at it. So now we're just going around here and I'm just going to finish off right about here with a nice little like loop thingy. I'll backspace that last one because I don't like it. And there we go. And that is our rope, or line 01. So next what we want to do is loft this over top of this. You see this looks a bit big for the rope length that we're going for, so don't worry about that. We can scale it down and we'll be able to play around with it there. So now we'll go under our Create Compound Objects. Make sure that our line is selected. Our line is selected because what we're going to do is hit Loft and then go Get Shape. If your shape was selected, you have to get the line and it'll look all weird. So make sure your line is selected, then go Get Shape. Click on the shape we made. And there you go. It's kind of over top of it. But as you notice, and as I said already, it's way too big for the uh, line, and we can easily fix that. So under here, what we're going to do is go under our deformations, and we're going to open up our skin parameters as well. But first we're going to deformations, and what we want to do is scale it down a bit. So we'll click on scale, select both of these. This is at the beginning of your path, and this is at the end of your path. So you can make it scale smaller at the end of your path compared to the beginning, or anything like that. However, we want both of the scales to be the exact same. 
We just want to uniform scale across it down to about 50% of its original width. No, even more. 35% of its original width. Something like that. And as you see, there's some clipping in there. If you really want to, we can fix it by going under loft or path and then just select this one right here. Under path. And I don't doesn't let me select it because it's being lame and weird. Sometimes it does it's not being very nice. There we go. I want this line to show up here. Go under vertex. And now we can play around with some of the settings. So we can just pull this vertex out of there or in there. Um, I'm going to try to select the vertices. It should be around here somewhere. It is. There it is. That is that one. This one goes in about there. About there. This one here. There we go. We'll just pull it in to about here. Rotate a bit. And there's one right here that we can pull out. So there we go. We just fixed up a bit, made it a bit easier for us to work with. And there it doesn't have any clipping, as many clipping errors. So we got the rope. It still doesn't look like rope. That's okay because we've forgotten the most, not forgotten, we haven't done the most important part, and it's this twist. So we click on the twist, click this last one, and we twist it about 5,000. As you can see, the twist looks a bit awkward. Don't worry about that. We just go to our path shapes, our steps, and pop that up to 50. And it still doesn't look any good, so we'll pop it up to 100. And I kind of like that. That looks a bit more rope-like. However, I want to up the twist to about 7,500 now. And now it's a more twisted rope. So that is the high poly rope. And that's really all that is to how to create the high poly rope. You twist it, you scale it, you kind of tweak some things. Make sure your rope looks good. It doesn't have to look like mine just because I pulled out my spine randomly. And next one I'm going to do is I am going to readjust my headphones because they're hurting my head and I'm going to rename this to high poly rope. Now what we can do is we can right click on this, convert to edible poly and that is completely done. Now that's an edible poly and what I'm going to show you is how many, later I'm going to show you how many polygons we just destroy by uh, getting rid of it. Well not getting rid of it. Next what we're going to do is create our low poly rope. Since we want the rope to be the exact same area and location, area and location, we want the rope to be exact same like width and everything of it. We'll just go under our rendering and interpolation of this. We notice that these were 10 across from each other. This was 10, this was 10 away from the home grid, so the radius should be around 10. So what we'll do is enable and viewport and render. Make sure line 001 is selected. This is the line we created the loft from. However, the line itself, since we created the loft is now in Edible Poly, any of that uh, stuff is gone that we needed, any of that inheritance, I guess, is gone. So what we're going to do is make our thickness to be about 10. As you see, it's a bit outside, a bit inside of it. And we might want to increase that to 11. Or we might want to decrease that to 9. However, I think 9 would work, or 9.5 would work pretty well. So there we go. We'll have about 9.5. And that's the reason I set them 10 away. So I know a very good ballpark place for my, uh, for my high poly rope, or low poly rope. Now as you can see, this is our low poly rope. There's pretty good on the polygon count. Nothing too spectacular, nothing too crazy. Um, you can drop it down. What I usually like doing is dropping down my radial thickness down to about 8 or 6. Um, this cuts out a lot of polygons. This halves the number of polygons just by making the rope more square. It doesn't really matter. The bump map will take care of a lot of it for us. I will like leaving this at 8 instead of 12. And the interpolation, just use 6 and then optimize it. It doesn't matter. It's good enough, usually. And now we will start the baking. However, we need to do two more things before that happens. We need to rename this to low poly rope. Then we need to select both of these, all of them. And first we have to select our low poly rope, convert that to an edible poly and select both of these, the low poly rope and the high poly rope, which should be two objects selected. Make this a black color. And now make two materials. So just a standard material for both of them. One will be for the low poly, one will be for the high poly. We really don't need one for the high poly, I just like having it there. So it doesn't really screw up for the low poly. High poly and low poly. And now as you guessed, We'll have our high poly material go to our high poly, and our low poly material go to our low poly. And there we go. So first, what we're gonna, I'm going to show off quickly is the insane lag I'm getting for some reason. And also, 
I'm going to go under statistics, configure, and open up my statistics, show it in active view. And right now we have on our, oh, I need to show selected. That was my bad. And under statistics, total and selection apply. See, our low poly rope is a thousand polygons. Pretty standard for a low poly rope. Our high poly rope is going to be 400,000. We're literally dropping 400,000 polygons and getting a pretty similar look. Not near as good. I mean, you will never do that because high poly is much better than low poly no matter what you do. But it'll still look pretty good. So next what we're going to do is press 0 to open our render to texture dialog box. And from this window what we're going to do is unwrap the rope because rope is very difficult to unwrap by hand and it's tedious and no one likes doing it. So we'll use it to unwrap it automatically and then we will also use it to bake. So first to unwrapping we'll make sure our low poly rope is selected and we'll use automatic unwrap, unwrap and drop that in channel 1. Now under our automatic unwrapping or automatic mapping we'll just drop the spacing down to 0 0.005. We don't need much spacing between them just because it's so it'll be so close anyways and it'll be automatic so they won't overlap it no matter what. So we'll just make sure that's all good those are the two things and we're just going to click unwrap only. This will automatically flatten the UVs and you can see the UVs in your open UV editor and there they are. They're all nicely unwrapped for us. So from now on we're just going to close that out. That's good. That's perfect. We are going to use the existing channel that we unwrapped which is channel 1. You can check it here where it says map channel channel 1 and it, there's usually if you're using existing channel it'll only show the channels that already exist, right? So 1 exists. It's the only one that does exist right now. So next what we're going to do is we're going to turn on our projection mapping. So under projection mapping we're going to enable it and we're going to pick our high poly and we'll just pick high poly rope. Now this will take a while, it has to create a cage for it, it has to see the tangents and everything and there we go, there's a cage, you can see it around it and it envelopes everything quite nicely actually. So there we go. Next what we're going to do is we're going to go under our options. And under these options, what we want to do is change our normal map space to world. Our orientation, that should be good. You can switch it around, get a bit of an inverted look with the noise, but that's, or with the bump, but that's pretty good. Our height map, since we are pretty close within the one inch radius that I set, I'm going to set the mat min height and max height to 2.5. This says two point, we'll look 2.5 inches above our, above our uh, low poly rope and 2.5 inches below the low poly rope and we'll get the bump map from that cage itself. Um, since I made sure it was within the one inch radius, 2.5 gives us lots of leeway just in case. Uh, we'll use the same ray trace cage method. Ray trace just sends a ray out from your tangent um, and then it says, okay, did I hit anything? No. And when it does, it'll send something back. And it uses a cage which was automatically created for us. So the rest here is pretty good. We'll close that out. And next what we are going to do is make sure that we will add a bump map, normals map, sorry. Those normals and bumps are pretty uh, interchangeable in this dialog box. And now what we want to do is make a large map. We'll just use 1024, that's good enough. And we'll save out our map to wherever we want to. So I will save this to the place I was working with low, low poly ropes normal map. That's perfect. Save, yes. Okay. Um, so we'll save that into there. And what we want to do is since we created a material already for low poly, so we can just quickly go back to it and see how it looks by changing a uh, little parameters if we need to, we can just output it into the source map that we already created. And this will automatically put it into the bump slot bump slot. Man, I'm talking fast. Uh, apologies. This will automatically put it into the bump slot because we set the target map slot to be bumped up in this area right here. Um, so from there on, this should be easy enough to render out and we'll see what happens. So press render. We'll overwrite the file just because mine was already there. And as you can see, the material and the uh, other object is showing up on how it will look on our object, our material. So now what we'll go do is select the high poly rope and hide it so we can easily render this out under my material editor and right here you can see the low poly map the normal map is right in here it's nicely set up and it will show up on here next what we'll do is go under our diffuse color 
and select a dark brown color, kind of like a rope color, so something like that. So if you want to copy that 73 red, 44 green, and 21 blue. And we'll press OK. Next, what we're going to do is, I usually find their bump maps to be kind of subtle, a bit too subtle, especially for low poly stuff, so I bump this up to about 50 or 100. And now what we're going to do is press F9 and hope it looks perfect. And there you go. It doesn't look the best, it doesn't look the worst, though, but I mean, you're far away from it. It looks like a rope. And we'll have to work a bit closer than that. And what we need to do is actually bump up the bump map a bit more to about 100. There we go. Now it looks more like a rope. That might be a bit too much. 75. This one you always just have to play around with. Usually you'll never use this render in anything, this low poly render. But what you will do is you will use this low poly render in a game engine and that'll have all their materials and stuff that you play around with in there. So there we go. We have a low poly rope that is created from a high poly rope. And it doesn't look like anything. It looks like a rope, which is what we wanted it to look like. And with some uh, lighting and stuff, it'll look even better. But we won't do that because that's left to the game engine. So that is shows you how to create a quickly create a low poly rope from a high poly rope within 15 minutes. We go down from 400,000 uh, polys to well 2,000 or 1,000, which is a huge step. And because of the uh, loss of detail just from that step, it still shows up pretty well in the render. So I hope you learned something and hopefully I'll get more tutorials out soon. I'm starting it up again. I can notice that my voice is talking fast and I'm not as experienced as I used to have been, which is strange because this is my latest one. However, I'm just a bit sloppy and out of practice. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed it to create a low poly rope and I will see you again next time. Cheers.